welcome back to the second part of this tutorial series and in this video we'll be adding a shooting mechanic into the game and this will be a special shooting mechanic where we'll allow the player to only shoot once every five seconds and there'll be a countdown after every time they shoot so let's begin To get started, we're going to import a few new sprites. We'll be importing the bullet blue outline. Um, we'll use the bullet blue one and the bullet red one, the ones with outlines. And just select the ones that correspond with the, with the color you selected. And then we'll just go to the costume and rotate it to face right. And we'll rotate this to face right as well. And we'll rename this one to player to bullet. And we can rename the blue one to player one bullet. Um, this one has been spelled incorrectly and we just correct it. Now we want to go to the code of our player one tank. And the first thing we're going to do is work on the shooting mechanic so we'll go to control or actually events and say when i receive play then we want to forever count down our timer so we will create a brand new variable called player one bullet timer then we'll create another variable called player Two bullet timer so we'll go to operators and bring in the equals to operator and bring the not operator so you want to look if the player one bullet does not equal to zero and if that's the case then we can go to events and wait one second and after that one second has passed then we want to look if the game is active and if it is active so if it does equal to one we can then change the player one bullet timer by negative one and then we can create another script from events and say when i receive play will reset the player one bullet timer to five and then we'll have it go back to its original position so it can go to motion and this should still be set to the original player the original position of the player and then go to control and bring in a forever loop and then we're going to look if then bring in an and operator and we're going to look if two properties are true we want to look if game active equals to one and player one bullet timer equals to zero so the timeout has elapsed then we'll allow the player to press the shoot key so we'll have it be space for our player one tank and we look if key space is pressed then we're going to create a clone of the player one bullet and after we've created that clone we're going to reset the timer so we can just set the player one bullet timer to five now we can go to our bullet sprite and we're going to say in the events when flag is clicked hide the sprite and and then we're going to go to when i start as clone and bring two of those blocks in and for our player one bullet we would want to go to our player one tank and then after that we would show our bullet and we'll have it point in the direction of the player so we'll make it point in direction and then go to sensing 
and have this be the player one tank direction and bring that over there and then we would go to control and bring in our forever loop and go to motion and we'll have it move 15 steps and after that we would want to go to control and bring in another forever loop and then we would look for two things if and then bring in another if statement so then we'll look first in the first if statement with an or block and look if we're either touching the edge or touching the player to tank then we can look if the player to tank if we're touching the player to tank not the edge in this scenario and in this if statement we're going to broadcast player one round one and then okay don't mind this player w that's just a mistake i made and after we've broadcast this we can just delete the clone so we'll delete it underneath this if statement so now we have a bullet that should be working and we have the player tank as well so what we'll do is just go to our player one tank and we're going to be creating the explosion effect so to create this effect we're going to go to the sprites from the kenny top down tanks redux file and then first just import the first explosion sprite and we'll import the rest of these costumes so from explosion 2 to explosion 5 and then boom we have the explosion working finally and for this explosion what we'll have it do is go to when flag is clicked and then we'll hide it and then we'll go to control and say when I start as clone we will switch the costume to the original explosion and then show it and after that we're going to go to control and repeat four times and then we'll have it go to the next costume and after that we're going to wait 0 0.1 seconds and then delete this clone so now we need to go to our player one tank what we'll start off with is creating four new variables we'll call the first one old x player one the second one we call it old x for the player two so old x player two and then this one we'll call it old y player one and we'll call this next one old y player two and we can just hide these old y blocks but keep the player one and player two bullet timers ticked on and what we'll have them do is set the old x player one to the x position and we can duplicate that and set old y player one to the y position we can find these under here and we'll duplicate it and set this first one under this pointing direction and then we'll go into events and say when i receive play then forever set old x player one to the x and y position now we want to have something happen if the player one round one happens and then we'll also create another one called player two round one and what we'll do here is if the player one one which is itself then we'll have it wait one second 
and then just duplicate what we have right here and just remove it and place it here and if it's a player two who won then we want to duplicate this but instead hide it before we wait this second and then show it once the seconds have passed now we want to add this code to the player to tank so the new code is this right here so we'll just separate the old code that's already in the player to tank which is these two except this set old x so we'll go to our player to tank and set the old x player to and set old y player to and then we can set that to the x and y position of the tank now we have that working now we can just drag these in like this 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 and this and this final one here now we'll notice that this has the let's separate this old one here that we don't need to change this will have the code of the player one so we need to change this to player two code so let's start from top to bottom I'll just organize this so it's easier to change and we'll start by changing this to old x player 2 and old x old y player 2 and then change this to when I receive player 2 round 1 and change this to when I receive player 1 round 1 we'll just switch these two up and then just <laughs> change the direction um, I mean position and then we'll say set player 2 timer bullet timer and instead of this position we have right here we want to use this position which is also here so we can just replace this and then have it point in direction negative 90 and duplicate this and put it right here and then we can just take away this old go to and bring in the correct player to go to and say player two bullet timer equals to zero and instead we'll change this key to L and create a clone of the player two bullet and set bullet two time player two bullet timer to five and then change this to the player two bullet timer and change this to the player two bullet timer and make sure everything is correct and corresponding to what it's supposed to and now we just need to go to the player one bullet and then we can just drag this here drag this here and drag this here as well and all we need to do is change this to touching player one tank and then player one tank as well we'll broadcast player two round one and we'll have it go to player two tank and it change the direction to player two tank and it will automatically change it to the x position instead so change that to direction and that should be it now just one more thing to make the game look better let's large screen the player two bullet timer and large read out the player one bullet timer and move these right here make sure that this one is the player one you can just normal read out and make sure it's on the left of the screen and what we'll do is go to paint and we're going to paint two new sprites so we're going to make the color of this sprite black and we'll make this player one and change this to marker and then just increase the size a bit and move this over here and then duplicate this by right clicking on it and move it here and we can just change the text to player two instead 
now we can just rename this to player to display and rename this to player one display and then go to the code of this sprite and basically all we need to say is when flag is clicked hide and when I receive play show that's it and we can just move this to this one as well and that can be fine now that should be it but just to make our tanks move in a little better um, looking environment I'm going to upload a backdrop and the link for this backdrop is in the description it's just the plain level backdrop so now if we test the game we can see our tanks are moving around freely if we shoot then it's going to reset and if I shoot actually at the player they're going to die I mean get destroyed and now we can go to the explosion and then just finish up the code for this and all we need it to do is go to control and say when I receive player one round one and when I receive player two round one then we're going to have it go to and if it's a player one who won, then we want it to go to the player two because it's a player two who lost in this instance. And if it's player two who won the round, then we can make player one be the one it goes to. And then create a clone of itself. So create a clone of myself and just do that twice. Now one more thing we need to do is go to our backdrop and say when I receive player one round one and when I receive player two round one then we will have it wait one second and go to variables and set game active to zero. And the reason why doing this is because later on in the game we're going to have something displaying what round it is and during this time we don't want the game to be active. And then we're just going to reset the bullet timers. So reset the player one bullet timer and the bullet two timer and we'll reset all of them to five and put this under both of them. And then after we've done that, we're going to wait three seconds. And then once we've done that, we can duplicate this twice and then just put this under here now this sh should make the explosion take place Oop. and then they reset to their original positions and then the timer takes place afterwards so that is it for this video thank you so much for watching please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video the next video will be adding a new level into the game and we'll be adding collision detection so make sure to stay tuned for that goodbye